Um, there is a really wonderful safe and legal mushroom to use that it leads to neurogenesis, and that's called lion's mane. And lion's mane is a cascading white icicle, edible and choice mushroom they sell in the stores. The what Latin, stores? Well, grocery stores. Really? All over, yeah. Lion's mane, they're called, um, they have various brand names. One that I love is called Pom Pom Blanc. It looks like pom poms from cheerleaders. And lion's mane contains a, a unique group of compounds. Wow, uh, beautiful. Called uh, aranacines and hericinones. And these regenerate myelin on the axons of nerves. And so this is a mushroom. Kawagishi discovered this in 1994, a Japanese researcher, and he postulated it as a potential uh, preventative or treatment for Alzheimer's, muscular dystrophy, et cetera. But do you take it? I take it every day. Every day? Every day. Do you take it in a raw form? or do I you... take it in capsules. Oh. Uh, so you buy it? Yeah. We have a... We have an extensive product line. You uh, do? Yes. Well, how do you get to that? Hostdefense.com. Hostdefense.com. Why host defense? So that's part of your uh, innate immunity response, ah. supporting your immunity. But we, our main business is at fungi.com. And I registered that name myself. I'm kind of proud of that. It cost mm -hmm. me 25 bucks, 1994. Wow, you were on ahead, I you was were on ahead of the ball. Yeah. So winterize but, yourself. But Lion's Mane is a. It's safe mushroom to consume. There are several clinical studies out on it uh, treating mild co uh, cognitive um, dysfunction. Uh, but there's two mouse studies that I think are quite illustrative. And this is translational medicine. This translates from mice experiments to humans. We already know that it has aspects of neurogenesis. When you go into Alzheimer, a state of Alzheimer's, which is a big complex, but one of the characteristics is the formation of amyloid plaques. Demyelination of the neurons, myelin transmits the neural signals. Demyelination occurs. Your outer sheath on the neurons is, is interrupted by amyloid plaques that then prevent neurotransmission. So the experiments with the mice, which I think are so interesting, was one experiment was the, um, the maze experiment where the mice were put into an arena and they went out a corridor and they, they went one way in the corridor, they'd find food, the other way is no food. Well, very quickly the mice learned. You know, you go out the corridor, go to the left, you find food. They injected it then with a toxic uh, polypeptide that induces amyloid pa uh, plaque formation that is a neurotoxin. Very quickly, after two weeks or so, the mice developed neuropathy. Uh, they got confused. They couldn't remember which way to go. It randomized. Upon giving these mice again mushrooms for a few weeks, they nearly renormalized. Upon sacrificing the mice in the first part of the experiment, they saw the amyloid plaques and the demyelination. The second part of the experiment, of course, another subset of mice, um, they found that the myelin regrew and the amyloid plaque had resolved. This is a post mortem. You say, by say sacrifice. Well, yeah, it's a hundred mice. So you, you, yeah, for you, killing you, them. Yeah, you're, you're basically you're, cutting you're, their brains you're open. cutting off a representative sample. Right. You sacrifice them. You determine, yeah, that's representative of the population. Now mm -hmm. the remaining population that's, that's alive, they fed them the mushrooms, and they found that they regained uh, neurological function. Wow. The other experiment, which I find is even more fun, is um, and this was done in Japan. Uh, they put like a hundred mice in an arena. And uh, they put a toy in the middle of the cage. And all the mice got excited. They came up and sniffed it and smelled it and they got really excited. And, and they sat there with, uh, with counters to measure the number of points of contact. How many points of contact do the mice have exploring a new toy? So they got a really good baseline, hundreds of data points. And then they did the same thing. Then they introduced this cyclopeptide, this neurotoxin. And the mice then, after a while, were uninterested didn't have imagination, no curiosity. They put in a new toy, they were disinterested. They did the same thing. Now even their full-blown dementia-like symptoms gave them lion's mane mushrooms. And after a few weeks, when they put in a new toy, they came back to near normal levels. Upon sacrificing the mice, they found that the amyloid plaque had resolved and myelin had regenerated and neurogenesis had occurred. This is a smart mushroom. Now the tragedy that we face, I believe as a society, is we have people like yourself, people like me, we're all gonna suffer through neuropathy. We have a lifetime of a body intellect of knowledge that we're gonna start losing. So what is the loss to society of our elders forgetting, not remembering? So I think this is something that's really extraordinarily exciting. It's not patentable, 
It's the, the, the drug companies have no interest in this, but this is probably the number one thing that people can do, in my mind, to, preserve, to not only preserve cognitive function, but to expand it.